Okay, so there's a couple things that I want to go over really quickly, but most of this time I want to kind of open it up for Q&A. So think of some questions that you might have before I kind of continue. There's one more question that I want to ask all of you, and that is, is anyone interested in computer science or computer engineering? A lot of you. How many of you are interested in engineering that is not computer engineering? Anyone? Cool. Anyone interested in business? All right, what are some other majors you all interested in? Health, yeah. medicine, data things like analysis. that? What was that? Data analysis. Data analysis. Communications. Communications. <laughs> Mathematics. Cool. Cool. So the first thing that I wanted to go over with all of you, why I asked that question, is I want to talk a little bit about majors. So at UW, we have three different types of majors. If you flip to page 22 in that book, you can see a full list. It's like 180, 190 different majors or so. I wanted to go over the, the types of majors that we have so that you can be best prepared on your application. By the way, how many of you are seniors in the room? Okay, almost all of you. So when you fill out your application, you have a first choice major and a second choice major to put on your application. Your first choice major is the only one we will be looking at for admissions purposes. Your second choice major, we will consider you for general admission if you're not accepted to that first choice major. In essence, having a second choice major will benefit you on the application. Okay, yeah. Yes, on the application, you must select two majors. Put your genuine first choice as that number one choice, and put anything else as your backup secondary choice. Uh, I have all two more questions. Which, in our first major, is the first major most likely to get um, Depends on the major. So that's why we, we say put your genuine first choice as that first choice major, so we can consider you for direct to major admissions if your program offers it. So if a student is not admitted to that first choice major, if it does directly admit freshmen, we'll consider you for general admission. So we're never going to admit you to your second choice major. That just shows us you have an, another option if you're not admitted to that first choice. <coughs> yeah. So have that second choice major filled out so that we can consider you for general admission. So again, three different types of majors. Number one, we have open majors. Those are majors you can declare at any time. An example would be like marine biology. If you put marine bio as your first choice on your application, you're admitted, that's your assigned major. Congratulations. You can drop it, change it, switch it at any time. And then we have minimum requirements majors. Those are majors which have minimum requirements before you can declare them, but provided that you meet the minimum requirements, you can major in that at UW. An example is political science. If a student wants to major in political science, they need to come to UW, enroll, take three intro political science classes, pass with a minimum GPA of a 2.5. Once you've taken those three classes, not failed them, then you can declare political science. Then we have capacity constrained programs, which most of you are interested in by your show of hands earlier. So capacity constrained programs are programs for which we have more demand than there are seats available. So these are competitive to get into and admission is not guaranteed into these programs. All you have to do is select them as your first choice on your application and you're automatically considered. They do vary in levels of competitiveness, but most students will not be directly admitted to these programs. Most students will come to UW, study the prerequisites for the first two years, and apply to the major by the end of the sophomore year. Again, they do vary significantly. Biology admits 90% of the students who apply. Nursing admits 10% of the students who apply. Again, they vary significantly. For students interested in computer science, computer engineering, engineering, and business, they do directly admit students. All you have to do for those majors is put that as your first choice on your application. You're automatically considered. Previous experience in that subject is not considered in the review, but it will benefit you once you get to the UW. So a couple of things. I want to go over those three programs in particular. Computer science and computer engineering first. Those two majors are the most competitive majors at the University of Washington, and a student must be directly admitted to computer science or computer engineering if that's what you want to study. You will not be able to transfer into those two programs as a current UW student. You must be directly admitted. Again, previous experience in CS is not required, nor will it benefit you on the application. We just want to see you generally as a very strong applicant across the board, and I'll talk about what that means in a little bit. Number two, 
the College of Engineering. If you select any engineering program as your first choice on your application and you're admitted, by the way, not computer engineering, but any other engineering program, if you select it as your first choice and you're admitted, you will come into UW as an engineering undeclared student directly enrolled in the College of Engineering. If a student uh, gets admitted directly to the College of Engineering, they are guaranteed to graduate from UW with an engineering degree, but we will not guarantee a specific major. And that's because all engineering students go through the same one-year curriculum, and at the end of their first year, you tell the College of Engineering your first and second choice engineering major. 96% of students get their first or second choice. So some are more competitive than others. Aerospace engineering is one of the more competitive ones, being so close to Boeing, whereas materials sciences and engineering is a little bit less competitive, for example. If you look up UW engineering placement rates, you can actually see how competitive they are on our website. Lastly, the Foster School of Business admits about a third of its incoming class directly as freshmen. Most of those students are going to be Washington residents. The admissions rate is fairly low. It's about 15 to 20 percent for direct admission to Foster, meaning most students will not be directly admitted into business. Instead, they'll come to UW, study the prerequisites for the first two years, and apply into business, where the acceptance rate's more around that 30 to 50 percent range. And again, that's based on your performance when you're a current UW student. Most of our medical programs that people are interested in are capacity constrained and do not directly admit freshmen. Things like biology, chemistry, biochem, uh, those majors do not directly admit freshmen. You'll have to come to the UW, study the prereqs, and apply. And those majors typically have a higher um, acceptance rate. For example, again, biology, biochem, they're in that 70 to 90 percent acceptance rate at UW. Major is a factor that we use in the admissions process. So again, put your genuine first choice on the application as your first choice major. It is better to select a specific major than it is to select undecided or pre-major on your application. So please, if you can, narrow it down to one specific major. You're not locked into the major that you choose on your application. You can always change this later on, except for computer science or computer engineering. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about for majors, does anyone have any questions about majors before I move on to talk a little bit about essays and what makes you a competitive student? Yeah? There are informatics majors, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, we have a major called informatics. It's about a 20 to 25% acceptance rate. We describe it as like computing for the social good. So for students interested in social justice and computer science, this can be a really good blend of the two. Um, informatics does admit a small number of students directly every year through direct admission, but most students will do the prerequisites and apply to informatics later on. Yeah. Yes. Question was, if you didn't hear it, is it possible to get admitted to computer science or informatics as a transfer student? Yes, and if you come from a Washington community or technical college with two years of coursework completed and strong major preparation, you are more likely to get admitted than a freshman student. For example, computer science admits about 30% of Washington community and technical college students with 90 quarter credits who have strong major preparation, who have completed all the prereqs for that major, compared to about 10% for freshman students. So you are more likely to get admitted after you go through that process, provided that you do those things that I just said. So yes, you definitely can transfer into those programs, and they do have seats set aside specifically for transfer students. Yeah? Yeah, so all of our engineering programs are going to have the same acceptance rate. It's between 30 to 50% based on the year, um, directly to the College of Engineering. And again, the college places you into the major by the end of the first year. Yeah. Yeah, it depends what specific major you're interested in. Um, if, you're, if you're concerned about what the acceptance rate is for a major generally, if you're looking at a capacity constrained major in that view book, you should reach out to that specific department. You can send them an email and just say like, hey, I'm a prospective Husky, like what is the acceptance rate for informatics or what's the acceptance rate for XYZ major and they should be able to tell you that information. I don't have all of them off the top of my head. Yeah, 
Good question. So average GPA, we don't have a specific GPA range or cutoff for students, especially for Washington residents. I'll get back to this in a second, but just like for all of you, your GPA literally doesn't matter, nor should it determine your self-worth as an individual. Your GPA tells me nothing as I'm reviewing your application. What I mean by that is you could literally have a 4.0, but taken the easiest classes at your high school compared to a student with a 3.5 who's been in running start for two years. GPAs are different, but so is the course rigor. So we're looking well beyond what your GPA number is. We want to see what your GPA number means. And so we'll come back to that in just a second. I've seen students as low as like a 2.8 get admitted to UW because we're looking at a lot of other factors beyond just GPA. And again, we'll come back to that in a second. Yeah. For transfer students? Yeah, so most majors have specific seats set aside for transfer students. Yeah. Any of you in Running Start? Um, what if you, I've been in Running Start before transfer Yeah, so for those of you who are in Running Start, you will always apply as a freshman, even if you have an associate's degree. Apply as a freshman through the regular freshman admissions process. If you're concerned about how your credits will transfer, look up UW College Equivalency Guide. You can look up your college and exactly how those courses will transfer to the UW. Okay, before I want to open it up for Q&A, the last thing I want to tell you about is our writing section and tell you a little bit about what we're looking for in your application. Okay, so we will not review your Common App personal statement. We are only reviewing the UW writing section of the Common App. The Common App personal statement and the UW personal statement are almost identical. You can literally copy and paste. We're not looking at the Common App personal statement. Okay. When you are writing these essays, a couple of pieces of advice. Number one, we are not looking for students who have a gold medal at the Trauma Olympics. You don't have to have the most horrible story to get admitted to college. Really what we are looking for is students who have a genuine level of reflection about their lived experience. So we're not looking for students who have like the wildest story they could possibly tell us, but instead how that experience has impacted them as an individual. How did that experience impact how you show up in the world? That genuine level of reflection about the experience is more important than the experience itself. Couple of other things. Second thing, do not get too creative writing these essays. We really want you to answer the prompt directly because we're looking for very specific things. A lot of the times I'll read, uh, I'll read essays that are really creative. They'll be like lyrics or slam poems. I one time read an essay written in iambic pentameter. Really fun, really interesting, but it doesn't really help you on the application. We're not looking for creativity. So again, answer those prompts directly. Students, you should always read your essays out loud. And if it sounds weird, it's because you need to revise it. That's also like a free writing tip. That's a really easy way to catch your mistakes. We're not looking at the, the quality of your writing. We're more looking at the content of your writing. So again, now is not the time to flex on me with your SAT words. We're looking to see like, how do you actually speak as an individual? I should be able to hear your own voice coming through the essays. Okay. And then before I open it up for Q&A, because we do have a little bit of time left, how do you get admitted to UW? Two things. Number one, will this student be academically prepared to succeed at UW on day one? So that, uh, those are all of the academic factors. Those are what courses did you take? Did you do well in them? Did you take college prep courses? Do you have an upward grade trend? All of those academic factors kind of count in that first bucket. Number two, will this student contribute to our community that we have on campus? We define that very broadly, but in general, we're looking at your essays, your activities, and your awards to gauge that level of community involvement. Those two things will get you admitted. Will you be academically prepared to succeed at UW, and will you contribute to our campus community in some way? Pretty easy. OK, want to open it up now for Q&A that you guys have. Yeah. Yeah, UW and the high school classes, are uh, they'll transfer for credit once you come to UW, provided that they're freshman level or higher. Um, so generally, all of those classes will transfer to UW. Um, the UW and the high school classes are seen 
just the same as any other college prep course. So whether you take a UW in the high school course or you take a course at Bellevue College, they're going to be exactly the same in our review process in terms of how we review the rigor of those courses. Um, so taking a UW in the high school class is no different than taking a class through Running Start or through another college or university, uh, but it is just about the most rigorous thing you could do, taking an actual college level class to prepare you for college. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, so we will not consider AP test scores for admission, but we will look at the, the fact that you did take AP classes and the grade which you got in your AP class. So if you took A push and got a one on the exam, like cool, um, but we're not considering that one for, for admissions. Same thing if you got a five, we don't care about the actual exam score. And that's because not all students have the opportunity to actually pay for and sit for the exam. So we don't care about the actual exam score. That being said, if you got a three, four, or five on an AP test, it'll transfer for credit once you get to UW. Uh, but we're more looking at which AP course did you take and what was your grade in that class. Obviously, like not all AP courses are the same in the review process. AP Physics C is probably like one of the most challenging AP courses compared to something like AP Studio Art, right? Like those are just different in terms of how rigorous they are. So it's not the number of AP courses we're looking at. We're literally going course by course by course to see what classes did you take and what was your performance in those courses. Yeah, all the way in the back. Yes, question if you didn't hear it, do I see the classes you're taking as seniors? Yes. We are only reviewing your grades through the end of your junior year, but we will take into account your senior year courses in the review process, and that's a very large component of our review process. We really do care what courses you take in your senior year because it's one of the most important indicators of how well you're gonna perform in your first year at UW. Which makes a lot of sense, right? Like if you're taking really hard classes your senior year, you're probably gonna be pretty well prepared coming in as a first year student. Whereas if you're taking super easy classes your senior year, you're probably not gonna be as prepared as another applicant. So yes, we will see those senior year courses and we will ask for a final official transcript to be sent to UW once you are admitted and decide to enroll. So we will eventually also see those senior year grades. Provided that your grades aren't drastically different from your previous three years, you should have no problems here. Um, but generally, like, do not slack off your senior year. Your senior year grades do matter, and we could, in theory, rescind a student's admission for not performing well in their senior year. So your senior year grades do matter, and we will eventually see them. Yeah. Um, will you look at all, all terms or just semester grades? Yep, we will look at every single class that you've taken and every single grade which you've earned in those courses. So even PE or gym, like those physical education classes, those do count on your application. So terms, sir, count terms as well? Mm -hmm. Also, um, are you gonna look from ninth grade to 12th, or just uh, junior or senior? Yeah, so we will look at every course you've ever taken from ninth grade through 12th grade. We're only reviewing your grades through the end of your 11th grade year. How many of you have taken the SAT or ACT? Cool, probably is not gonna impact any of you. Um, so we pretty much do not consider SAT and ACT scores in our review process. Last year out of 53,000 applications, we looked at this for about 200 students and it impacted admission for about five to seven of them. Five to seven, th five to seven students out of 53,000 applications. It's probably not gonna impact any of you in this room. Um, what I say generally, if you're proud of your SAT and ACT score, you can send it to us. If you don't like your score, you don't have to send it to us. If you don't have like a spectacular score, we probably aren't going to consider it in the review process anyways. If you submitted a one out of 36 on your ACT, I don't even know if that's possible, but let's say you have like the lowest possible score on your ACT, it will not negatively impact your application at all. When I open up your application, I will not even see your test scores. It's just in the final selection when they may make a difference, again, for like less than 10 students. Is there a question over here? Yeah. 
Yeah, so students who may have had lower academic performance and not like an upward grade trend, a couple of things that I want to mention. Number one, you have an additional information section on the application. Fill that out and tell me why your academic performance was not where you think it could have been. And this could be for a variety of reasons. We don't really, um, we want to know why. You don't have to like re-traumatize yourself by telling us. But if it was due to like mental health reasons, health reasons, or you were just, I don't know, you transferred schools or something, like give us a little bit of background so we can take it into consideration in our review process. Especially if you have a downward grade trend in your junior year. And that's because we put more weight on your more recent grades, right? Which makes sense. Like in your freshman year, you were literally 14. So we want to see like what your more recent grades were. So especially if your grades went down in that junior year, totally fine. You can still get admitted. A year of bad grades is not going to negatively impact your admission as long as you tell us about it in that additional information section. Yeah. Is there ever a chance that like, college credits could not get transferred fully? Yes. So... College credits, how they transfer, they will transfer under three conditions. Your class has to be 100 level or greater, so freshman level or higher, academic in nature from a regionally accredited institution that matches a similar course at UW. So to put that into practice, Math 107 at Bellevue Community College transfers to UW. Yoga 40, Design Your Life 15, like those uh, vocational or elective courses will not transfer to UW. It must be a freshman level or higher academic course to transfer. Also, um, courses on like Coursera or Khan Academy um, or DigiPen, like these places that are not regionally accredited also will not transfer credit to the UW. Yeah. General admissions rate for Washington residents is about 60%. So I think like 50 something percent for out of state students and about 45% for international students. You're considered an international student in our review if you need an F1 visa to attend the University of Washington. For those of you who may, may be on H4 visas, if you've lived in Washington for more than one year, you're considered a Washington resident. H4 visa holders who have not lived in Washington for at least a year, you'll be considered as an out of state student. If you're concerned about what your application type is, if you're an international national student or a domestic Washington resident, you can send me an email directly and I can help you out with that too. Yeah. Um, under some of the listed majors, there's like an extra like subset, like in high, like a house size. Can you talk about what that means? Yeah, so for those of you who are looking at the majors in the booklets, you may see like italicized little things next to the majors. Those are concentrations within the majors that you can study within that major. Some you'll declare the concentration in some majors, and some majors it's more of like a track that you can kind of go down, but those are more specific concentrations that you can study within the specific major. Does that mean you have to have a concentration within that major? Depends on the program. Some majors require a concentration to be declared, some don't. Um, it really depends on the specific program itself. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, so the review process for any direct to major admissions is the exact same. Like, I'm going to be reviewing not your application specifically, but I'll review like all Washington residents or all out of state students, and they're reviewed the exact same way. To be the most competitive applicant for things like engineering or computer science and computer engineering, we're not looking for specific like subject involvement. We don't care that you've done a lot of CS experience. That will help you once you get to UW, but you don't have to like develop an app to get admitted to UW CS. In, re in reality, what we're really looking for is extreme levels of progression kind of across the board, but especially in math and science. That's going to make you the most competitive applicant for those really computational programs, math and science level in particular. Things like AP computer science are seen as elective, academic electives in our review process. I would rather you see, I would rather you take AP calculus than AP computer science principles. Again, math and science level will make you the most competitive for those programs. Yeah. Question was how much do internships affect admission? Um, an internship is seen the exact same way as any other activity. Really what we're looking for in your activity section is what your level of involvement was within that activity. So jobs, 
internships, work studies, clubs, uh, religious organizations. You help your younger sister after school. Um, you play Fortnite competitively. I don't know. Literally whatever you're doing outside of the classroom counts as an activity, including your hobbies and your interests. Students always ask me, how can I stand out in the application review? Put your hobbies on your application in the activities section. If you have 10 spots for an activity, I want to know what you do outside of school. Like if you do Chinese calligraphy, like I want to know about that. That is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Okay, so that's one thing you can do really easily to stand out. In that activity section, what most students forget to do is tell me what they did. So you have a description section on the activities uh, portion of the application, and most students do not touch it, and you should. And what you should put in that section is one, your level of involvement, and two, like how many hours-ish per week or per month or per whatever you spent in that activity. For example, if you are in DECA, for example. Does your school have DECA? Yeah. Okay. If you're in DECA, for example, you should write something like, Vice President, I spend seven hours per week running meetings and competing. Right? Like, I don't know. I, I never did DECA. But like, you know what I mean by that? Like, what was your position and how long did you spend in that activity? If you're practicing something for like 10 hours per week, I literally will not know that unless you tell me. So for students who are also athletes, if you are practicing for three hours a day for four months out of the year, you should write that on your application. I have no idea otherwise your level of involvement or commitment to your activities if you don't tell me specifically. Yeah? So you said we could transfer to UW from a community college and for the computer science course, you need some sort of prerequisites. And if you do those prerequisites, it'll increase your chances of getting in. What are some of those prerequisites? Yeah, so prerequisites for computer science you can actually find on the website for computer science. If you look up UW My Plan, UW My Plan or UW My Major is another tool we'll use. Um, that will actually tell you all of the prerequisite courses that you'll need to apply to a specific major at the UW. And then you can use that college equivalency guide to literally prepare yourself and say like, okay, I'm gonna go to Bellevue College, I'm gonna take these courses, and they will exactly equal the UW prerequisite. So you can do that online. And again, if you have questions about how to do that, send me an email and I'll send you instructions on how to do that. Really good question. If you have done running start in between 11th and 12th grade, how would you report that on the application? Do you know the answer to this one? I can say that now running start, some of them are actively after running start, where they were kind of a, yeah. a weird quarter that didn't really count. So as of this coming summer, yeah. and I believe mean, last summer I did as well. Would you report that in 11th or 12th grade? senior level class. It doesn't really matter in our review process. What's more important is we see that you took the class sometime in your four years. So we don't really care that it was a summer class versus like a fall class. We just want to see when or like did you take the class. Yeah. Aren't AP technically college equivalent classes? Yes. AP, IB, Running Start, Dual Enrollment, College in the High School, all the same in the review process. We just want to see, did you take challenging courses? Did you do well in them? And also, again, we're looking at what, what class did you take? Not the fact that you took a college level course. You can take really easy college level courses. So we're looking, again, at the type of class that you're taking. For example, if you're doing Running Start and taking multivariable calculus, that is a different class than if you're taking like Shakespeare, right? Like those are just different. Okay, yeah. I have no idea. That's a really great question. Send me an email and I will get you an answer to that one. Uh, the question was, do we look at the UW in the high school grade, like on the high school transcript, or the college like four point grade? I don't know. And I'll get back to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was it wasn't pass or no pass, it was A or fail. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> okay. 
That's intense. So wait, if you don't get an A, like if you get a B, is it a? F oh. Okay, cool. I was like, if you got like an 89, it's just fail. <laughs> okay. Um, so COVID grades, basically how we look at that is we kind of infer what those grades might be. And how I kind of describe this, it's, it's a little bit murky and there's no like clear specific policy for this. But in general, if we see like A's throughout like your COVID grades, but you also have A's throughout your entire transcript, we're gonna be like, okay, those are generally probably pretty high grades. Especially when we're looking at like pass, no pass. If we just see pass, but then a student has like A's and B's, we're gonna assume like those pass grades were also A's and B's. But if a student has like all A's or all pass grades and their transcript is mostly D's and F's, we're not assuming that they just got 100% during remote learning, right? So we're kind of, kind of inferring those grades based on the rest of your overall transcript. So they're not those like grades, um, if they're past grades, they're not necessarily like hurting you or harming you. Um, it's really like what is the rest of your transcript looking like? And that was in your freshman year, right? So um, we're really, again, we put more weight on the more recent grades. So your sophomore year grades and junior year grades are gonna tell us a lot. We don't put a whole lot of emphasis on those first year grades. So it won't be a huge issue for all of you. Yeah, so let's say a student wants to get into business, but they're not directly admitted, what happens? You, ha okay, you guys are gonna pay $80 to apply, put a second choice major on your application. Number one takeaway for today, put a second choice major on your application. We don't care what it is. Even if you write computer science as your second choice, or you put Canadian studies as your second choice. We want to see, do you have a backup option? If you only put business as your first choice and you're not competitive enough to get into that program, you'll be denied admission from UW. If you put business as your first choice and have literally anything else as your second choice, we'll consider your application for general admission. And then you're in that same kind of 60% of Washington residents are admitted bucket. So genuine first choice major, number one. Number two, fill out the box. Put a second choice major. Put a backup option. Put your second choice there. It will increase your chances of getting admitted to the UW. Second choice major. Yeah. Yes, we're not looking to see what the second choice is. We're more concerned, does this student have a backup? In other words, if we admit this student, would they still come here to study something else? If you only have one major on your application, it shows to me at the admissions office, you're only interested in one thing, and if we're, if we're not admitting you to that one thing, you're not gonna come, so we're just gonna deny that student admission. So in other words, like have a second choice. Again, it could be the most competitive major, computer science, that will be read the exact same way as if your second choice major is Canadian studies, which is an open major. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, try not to put undecided or undeclared on your application. Really try to select a specific major if you can. Yeah. Um, so say you like make something like informatics really like classy to say like first choice major and you get denied, can you like reapply later? Yes. And For Correct, yes. For every single major except for computer science and computer engineering, you can apply directly to those majors after your second year. Those two majors, you have 0% chance of ever getting in if you're not directly admitted as a freshman or transfer in as a transfer student from a Washington community college. So for example, like informatics, if you're not directly admitted, uh, you could still be considered for general admission, in which case you would come to UW, study the prerequisites for informatics and apply to the informatics program after your sophomore year. Yeah, so you're gonna self-report your coursework, again, from freshman year through the end of your senior year. We're not asking for a transcript. Don't send us a transcript, we will not look at it. So you're gonna self-report it. 
Also, while we're on the topic, here are all the things we do not consider in the admissions process. So we don't want transcripts. We don't consider letters of recommendation. We don't look at legacy status. If you have a family member who went to UW, go dogs. But it's not something that we'll consider in the admissions process. We don't look at demonstrated interest. So the fact that you're here today is a big ego boost for me, but it's not something that we're going to look at in the admissions process. We also, again, don't look at SAT or ACT scores and AP test scores and IB test scores. So you don't have to send us any of that. It's literally just fill out the Common App, pay the $80, and send it our way. And that's all we need from you. If you are admitted, the only thing that changes is we will ask for a final official transcript to be sent directly to us from your school. Uh, but again, that comes way, way later in your senior year. Yeah, 650 words for the personal statement, 350 words for the community statement. It won't let you go over. And in general, a concise essay is better than using the entire full word count up to the specific word. So, like, another thing is that, um, well, what is the prompt exactly? Is it like, will the prompt like majorly ask us why should we accept you? Or yeah, so you can find the exact prompts on our website, and they're also listed in the view book if you wanted to take a look. Yeah. Do you have a question? Yeah. Like, if you're denied by both the first and second choice, Yeah, so to clarify, you're not going to be, like, denied from your first and second choice. If you're not accepted to your first choice major, we'll consider you for general admission. We're not considering you for your second choice major. So we're just considering you for second choice because you have a backup option. Yeah. But if you apply for second while and you're not accepted, then you can be generally admitted at the same time. How does that work for something like this? Say that one more time. So if you like apply for second while, I know that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So like for business in particular, how it works is you're either. Um, if you put business as your first choice and you're admitted, you have two options that it could say on your admissions letter. It'll either say, congratulations, you've been admitted. Business administration to the Foster School of Business means you've been directly admitted. Or it'll say pre-business administration, in which case you've not been directly admitted to that program. And you'll need to come study the prerequisites for the first two years and then apply to the program. Yeah. And that's just a fancy term for like general admission, or is that? Pre-business? Yeah. Yeah, any pre-major means general admission. Pre-major means the same thing as undecided or undeclared at any other university. So the fact that you are pre-science does not mean you are locked into the sciences. It doesn't mean you're locked into that specific program. So for a student who is in pre-business, you can take all of the oil painting and drama classes that you want. You are not locked into that specific major. Yeah, depends on the major, what the acceptance rate is after those first two years. So here's a piece of advice. For students who are only interested in studying one thing, if you know you want to study nursing, and that's all you want to go to college to study, UW may not be the best fit for you. And that's because a program like nursing only admits about 10% of current UW juniors and seniors who have completed all of the prerequisites for that program. There are those direct admission programs which may be a good fit for you. So for someone who really wants to study business and you're directly admitted to business, awesome. But for those capacity constrained programs that do not directly admit freshmen, you should go to UW if you're also open to studying other things. So for that student interested in nursing, knowing that nursing has a 10% acceptance rate, if you'd also be willing to come to UW to study biochemistry and later apply to medical school, it would still be a good fit for you. But UW does have that major system, and there is a chance a student is not admitted to the major that they want to study. So keep that in mind as you're kind of going through the admissions process and thinking about which school to apply for. Again, it's my job not that you go to UW, but it's my job that I'll help you kind of be guided to see if UW is the right fit for all of you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can always change your major, except. Computer science and computer engineering. Yeah, you can switch, drop, change, add, subtract your major if it's not those two majors. You can always switch out of computer science. You never switch in. 
And also you can switch between the two, no problem. So if you're in admitted computer science, you can switch to computer engineering and vice versa because they're within the Paul Allen School of Computer Science. So you can always switch between those two. Yeah? Can I pick one or two majors? On the application, you're limited to two. So you have to select first choice major and second choice. Once you get to UW, there is an opportunity to select more than two majors. You're going to want to work with an academic advisor, though, to kind of walk you through that process to see if you'll be able to graduate in four years. Um, but you can also add a minor and add two minors if you'd like to. So it's really up to the individual student. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, what makes UW CS and engineering so competitive, so prestigious? Um, the fact that it's in Seattle and well funded by companies like Amazon, like Microsoft, you're literally going into the Gates building um, for like the Paul Allen School of Computer Science, of Computer Science and Engineering. Um, fun fact for you, Amazon hires the most college graduates from UW out of any other college or university in the world. So like, Students who graduate from the UW computer science, computer engineering programs are going to, that is the school that is going to have like the highest salaries for their graduates. They're going to have some of the most opportunities. And again, there is that level of prestige when you say, I am a graduate of the Allen School, for example. I used to work at Amazon and when I was on hiring committees, when I was at Amazon, we would look and we would say, oh, that student's from the Allen School and would pull them into an interview. So it's like that level of prestige that really, um, really set students apart from like other colleges and universities. Yeah. One more time. There's no one factor that will make or break your application. What I will tell all of you, most of you are seniors, yeah? Okay, so you cannot turn the clock back and like redo your grades in sophomore year. The thing that you have the most control over are your essays. A poorly written essay would never be the sole reason an applicant would be denied admission from the UW, but an amazing essay could be the sole reason an applicant would be admitted to the UW. It's the most important part of your overall application because it's the only time where we get to know who you are as an individual. Again, it's the thing that you have the most control over because you can't go back in time and change your grades. This is the thing that you have the most control over right now. So spend a lot of time on those essays. Get them reviewed by friends. Get them reviewed by your counselors. Get them reviewed by teachers. Anyone who will read it for you. But again, we're looking for that genuine level of reflection about your lived experience. That's going to make the strongest essay possible. And also free plug for students coming from underrepresented groups. We have the UW Moore team, that is M-O-R. This will work, M-O-R. Multicultural Outreach and Recruitment Team. They're a team that works in the admissions office specifically recruiting underrepresented students. If you reach out to the UW Moore team from an underrepresented group, they will read your essays and give you feedback on them. They also hold programming for underrepresented students to help, um, to help with anything that you might need in the college admissions process. If you go to any of their programs and write it on your application, it will benefit you in the admissions process. UW Moore team. Yeah. Yeah, computer science, computer engineering have the same exact admissions rate. Um, so that's because you can switch between the two. So whether you select computer engineering or computer science, it's the same. The difference is computer science is really setting students up to be software developers, software engineers. You're going to learn coding. You're going to learn software languages, things like that. Computer engineering is more the circuitry and the actual engineering that goes into computer components and computer parts, making them more and more efficient. So you're working on the hardware and the software. That's the difference between the two. And again, you can switch between the two once you get to UW.
Yeah, so students who may have had like a couple like weird grades. You have all A's and then you have a B minus. Really, I would consider a weird grade to be a two drop, two grade drop. An A to a B minus, I don't care about that. An A to a C, a B to a D, that's concerning. So if it's more than two grade uh, levels, that would be a little bit concerning, and I would take that additional information section to tell me a little bit about why. You could literally write, I took AP Calculus BC and it was the hardest class I've ever taken. I blah, 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 to help improve my grade over time. Just give me a little bit of like background on why and we can take it into consideration. If you don't tell us why, we don't know the circumstances behind that and we're kind of left guessing and you don't want us to do that. So tell us a little bit about why. But like one bad grade, a couple bad grades would never like disqualify you for admission. Yeah. Do you have a question too? Uh, yeah. Is there like a limit to how much college credit you can get from like tests? Yeah. You can bring in up to 45 AP credits and also 90 lower division college courses. So for those of you who are like in Running Start, maybe you've done Running Start, AP, college and the high school, you can bring up to 90 quarter credits. So two years total. For AP, you can bring in one year total, so 45 total credits. If you are interested, also just look up UW AP credits. We have a full list of how your credits will transfer on our website. I've heard you guys don't really look at like the plus or minus too much, and it's more so like the letter grade, is that true? Yeah, yeah, if you got an A versus an A minus, cool. Like a 92 and a 95 are basically the same thing. So yeah, we don't really care if it's an A minus or an A, A or an A plus. Like we're really like what was the actual letter grade. Um, yeah. And you'll report it exactly as it appears on your unofficial high school transcript. Again, we do not review your transcripts. Please don't send them to me. But you can get an unofficial transcript from your school, which will help kind of as you go through the process of self-reporting your grades. It may be pretty easy to do that, um, so you can report it just as it is on your transcript. So since it's reported just as on our transcript, I know like at our school we don't have A minuses, we just have A's, like it's 90 up. Mm -hmm. What would we, do you want us to look at the percentages and like put A minus for a, like a certain score? Like you, they don't give pluses and minuses? No. Oh. Only for A's, but the rest of them do. That's weird. Yeah. Just put it as, as exactly as it, as it is on your unofficial transcript. That's how you can list it on the UW section. So if it says like B minus on your transcript, you can write B minus. If it just says A, just write A. Okay. You don't have to like specifically calculate it. Because again, we're going to see that final official transcript and we want them to match. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, so kind of all of the things that I've said so far. So again, genuine level of reflection about your lived experience is more important than the actual experience itself. Don't get too creative writing these essays. We really want you to answer the prompts directly. Read your essays out loud. We want you to uh, want to read this as if we are like, as if you're talking to me, that's how it should be written. So again, like, it shouldn't be too casual, but we also don't want you to like, completely just write like SAT and ACT words the entire like thing down. Like don't use a thesaurus. I'm not going to look up a word if I don't know it. So like um, just being real with you all. Um, so really we want this to be the most impactful stories you've ever read in your entire life are the ones where you connect with the main character. And the best way to connect with the main character through a novel is main characters who have that emotional connection with the reader. So again, use that level of emotional connection to really hook me into your story. That's probably the biggest piece of advice I can give, and that will make the strongest overall essay. Yeah? They don't have a minimum length, um, but they do have a max, and it won't let you go over the max. Again, be concise, um, but you don't have to use like all 650 words exactly. Um, I would say, most students submit something close-ish, maybe 80% of the way there, um, but whatever fits your essay in particular is totally fine with us. So you said for like, the essay program, since the technical is so low, it's actually harder like, than like your sophomores, um, then maybe it can't go as fast. Is it the same kind of for informatics? Like, is it like informatics? Informatics is about a 20% to 25% acceptance rate. So it's a little higher. It's about one in four students will be admitted. Three and four students will not be admitted. So again, 
definitely depends on like what your individual path is. For students who only want to study informatics, they do directly admit some freshman students. So once you get your acceptance letter back, you can see if you're directly admitted. And then if not, you can make that trade off like, okay, do I want to go to UW, study the prereqs for two years and chance it? Or do I want to go to another university that gives me direct admission to a similar program? Yeah. Yeah. Last two. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you are interested in the honors program? Okay. If you are one percent interested, you should apply. They got scholarship money for freshmen. Okay. So for the honors program, just say yes. I'm. An I am interested in honors on the application. Two additional essays will drop down. Why? Uh, what does interdisciplinary honors mean to you? And then select a current social issue and how you would study that from an interdisciplinary perspective. Interdisciplinary means multiple perspectives. Uh, looking at the same problem. If you're looking at a class on climate change, you're going to look at that from like a geological perspective, anthropological perspective, political science perspective, etc. So how it works is applying to honors does not make it more difficult to get into UW. After a student is admitted, if they did apply to honors, then the honors program will review their application, yes or no. So a student will be admitted first, and then the honors decision will come after. So again, applying to, to honors does not make it unlikely, that, more unlikely that you would not get admitted. Does that make sense? Students ask about that one all the time. So that's all you have to do, those additional two essays, and you're automatically considered. And then, yeah, bring us home. Um, say if you go in the Flex scholarship, is there a different way to apply, or would you apply anyway? Because I know that there's some students uh, From like a D1 sport at UW? Yeah, so for students with any sort of athletic connections for D1 sports, contact your coach directly and they'll tell you exactly next steps you need to do to apply. You're going to submit a freshman application, but the exact review process is going to be a little bit differently and you're going to work with athletics to kind of go through the process a little bit. Cool. If you guys have more questions, I won't be able to stick around today, but you can send me an email directly and I'm happy to answer anything that you have.